than the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is nothing worse that could ever happen to any of us, either individually or collectively in this ummah, that is worse than the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why am I saying that? I want you to think about the statement of Abu Bakr. I feel the same thing. Let's go and ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no dispute. Once you go and you talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's no argument. There's no discussion. That's it. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. The Rasulullah, the Rasul, he said this, and that's it. End of argument. No more discussion. You're right, he's wrong. There you go. And look at this ummah. If you look at everything and at all our problems, subhanallah. That's the because of the disaster of the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has left us. And so all of these doors for disputation and argumentation and conflict and differences has opened so you should think about that you should remind yourself that however bad it is it's not as bad as the disaster of the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Abu Bakr says Let's go and ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they go. And Hanzala explains how he feels. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Oh Hanzala, if you were to be in the state, when you go home, the same state when you go home as you were when you were with me, if you were to be in that state all the time, the angels will come down and shake your hand in the street. But there is a time for this and there is a time for that. There's a time when you will listen to talks, to lectures, you'll have your iman increased. There is a time to spend with your family, there is a time to work, there is a time to study. So your level of for sure, your level of Iman is not going to be the same all the time. It's not going to be constant. When you're with your family and when you're at work, it is not going to be like those moments late in the night when you are praying to your Lord and there is just you. And your prayers and your supplications and your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not going to be like all the time when you are making, reading the Quran and tears are coming to your eyes. As the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are reaching to your heart. You can't be like that all the time. It's very hard. So it's normal for the human being in their life to fluctuate. And you have to accept that. That's just normal. So sometimes you'll be feeling spiritually, mentally elevated. And other times you will feel low. You will feel comparatively down. And that's normal. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. But depression, I mean, depression is considered to be a type of illness. Uh, When we talk about depression, when we talk about clinical depression, it is something that is identified as a type of, you know, mental illness. 
and it's not what we normally think of or imagine is just low iman you know I'm not feeling mashallah me my iman is not feeling so high no it, it's something a lot more serious than that um, so some of the definitions and some of the descriptions of a person who is depressed and I'm just going to talk about it a little bit um, number one it's considered to, it, it's it's described as an all-encompassing low mood all-encompassing means it really the, the low mood takes over your being it, it it really takes over everything you just don't feel cheerful at all about anything and it's also identified with low self-esteem low self-esteem now it's very interesting in psychological terms that people who experience the most happiness in their life are people who are engaged in activities people who are engaged in activities that are challenging so they are neither too hard because if it's too hard you feel you can't accomplish that particular thing nor are they too easy because they're too easy you get bored so in reality any task that is on the very edge of your ability that you are involved in and that has some clearly defined criterion it has to have a specified outcome and it also has to be autotelic, meaning that you get a type of satisfaction from that action itself. Not because of any particular outcome, but there's something intrinsically satisfying about that action itself. So, and it's not too hard and it's not too difficult, as I mentioned. It has a clearly defined outcome. And two important things. When you perform this action, it increases your feeling of self-worth number one in other words you feel that you have improved yourself as a human being you've become a better human being when you've done this action you feel that number two you feel that you have contributed to the well-being of humanity in general or at least to a group of human beings so any action that has or fits those criterion is what they call optimal experience it's called optimal experience and psychologists have studied they've done extensive studies on this extensive and by the way cross-cultural cross-cultural studies across different cultures across different professions it's a very wide study and they found that universally human beings experience the highest state of happiness when they are involved in such experiences where they get this what they call optimal experience not as you might imagine people you may imagine that people are most happy when they are relaxing and watching movies and you know dancing and drinking and in reality you know you know watching sports or you know watching Canada win the you know the hockey for the Olympics or uh, I prob probably they're pretty happy right unless you're an American then you probably weren't very happy but anyway so the point being is that you know actually you may imagine that those are the things that make people happy but in fact they're not people actually get pleasure out of struggling they get pleasure out of struggling subhanallah they get pleasure out of it this is an amazing thing of course it's it shouldn't really be amazing to us but it's just another one of those things how modern science is uncovering deep psychological truths that we as Muslims should already know